Well, if you don't know me, my name is John. I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Adventure Church. And I don't know why they gave me the mic, but I'm grateful for it, you know. But I have to give honor where honors do. And there's the first people we need to honor this morning is our very own Pastor Anthony and Pastor Mandy. Because if it wasn't for them, I would not be here this morning in front of you, believe me. And so I owe them a lot of gratitude. And so I was thinking you both weren't going to be here because I didn't want them to think it was fixed, right? That I was going to say something and be like, they're just saying it because the pastor is there. But these, this season, you truly have been an inspiration and a blessing to me and my family. Because what you have modeled for us through this season of what our church has gone through, it is a testament that we truly are believing and standing on the word of God. So thank you. And so wherever my compadre is, you tell him I love him too. Mira, what's up, Pese? And I just gave it. I want to also honor my wife, my beautiful wife, Elsa, for being amazing, for enduring 13 years of marriage. Mira, watch out. October will be 13 years. And next week, I just found out we're celebrating 10 years here at Adventure Church. I've never been anywhere that long in my life. <laughs> and so, mira, the water's good. Drink up. Drink up. <laughs> and so I get the opportunity to share with you this morning. We are kicking off a new series, and it's called Kingdom Legends. Kingdom Legends. And so the, the, the kingdom legend that I am going to share with you this morning is Job. Job. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to do my best to share the lessons that I have learned from Job. And so this season has been quite the challenging season for me in the area where I have learning to be a parent. You're like, John, your kids, you have three of them. You should already know this. No, I'm really learning right now. Mira, I'm just getting it. <laughs> and there are, good th there are good times that it's been, and then there have been some challenging times. But one thing that I've enjoyed and that God has been teaching me through is that my kids are now at the age where they like stories. They love for me to tell them, hey, Dad, how did you and Mom meet? Dad, did you have another girlfriend before Mom? May I pass. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> and they get to tell, they ask about the childhood. So how were you when you were a kid? I mean, I was an angel. You need to learn from me. Yeah. But what it has taught me is that sometimes we don't like to tell the stories because of what they may reveal inside us that yet God, we've allowed God to heal. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even know that they're there until we go through difficult times in our life. And so we're going to walk through this as I have learned and studied the book of Job that there are Things that God was teaching Job that I believe that, you know what, God wants us to learn today. And so if you would, we're going to look at Job starting at chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. It says this in the New Living Translation. It says, there once was a man named Job who lived in the land of, you know, Uz or something like that. And he was blameless. A man of complete integrity, he feared God and stayed away from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 female donkeys. And he also had a partridge and a pear tree. No, I'm just kidding. And he also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in that entire area. Probably wasn't Mexican. Anyways, Job's son would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children, and he would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. And this was Job's regular practice. 
Now jumping over to the last chapter of Job, it says this. It says, then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You asked, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. And so the first personal lesson that I have learned about the story of Job, the life of Job, is this. Is that we believe a story before we tell a story. Especially when our faith is tested. Turn with me to Job chapter 1, verse 8. It says this. It says, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. When I read this, it was interesting to see how God believed in Job. The enemy came to look, and God said, have you considered my servant Job? God believes in us. The question is, is do we believe in him? And when we are tested in our faith, things begin, we begin to find out real quick where we're at. My children teach me that all the time. Because they're always running around. And you know when they're being bad because they're either quiet or very loud. But never, never something in the middle. It's either quiet or very loud. Something's being broken. And there have been times where I've just gone in there and I've been like, Lucas, what are you doing? First answer, nothing. <laughs> and there I go and I'm like, boy, you need to under, you need to listen. Right? But then I pray for him afterwards that the Lord will use him. But all of a sudden, I see that their face begins to change because they automatically believe that, you know what, dad is mad at me. That God, dad doesn't love me. That dad, you know what, is either something wrong with me. And it's great to read the story of Job and to see that from the very beginning, God already believed in Job. He's blameless. He's upright. He loves me. He's for me. And he stays away from evil. Have you considered him? And then you go and you look at the enemy. And you see that the enemy goes and he presents all these things to the Lord. And he tells God, yeah, but the only reason why Job is serving you is because you're protecting him. And isn't it obvious sometimes that when we're tested, we begin to allow the voice of the enemy to speak to us and tell us, yeah, the only reason why you're serving God is because, you know what, you want something from him. I came across this in my Bible, and it's, it, it was a question, and the question was, how deep does your faith go? I was like, thank you, God, for my pastors who gave me this Bible. It doesn't say Pastor Jonathan because I don't know if maybe they thought I wasn't going to make it or not. But you know what I mean? Thank God for this Bible. <laughs> it's just a joke. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but you know what? After six, seven years, me now, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm here. But how deep does your faith go? And sometimes we really don't know unless our faith is being tested. And the problem is, is that when we go through difficult times, when we begin to suffer, when we have adversity and hardship, 
we begin to believe the lies of the enemy. We begin to trust our compadres in what they say rather than what God has already spoken to us. When you are, your faith is being tested, may you remember this. I came across this quote. It's going to come up on the screen. It says this. Faith that is going to be trusted is going to be tested. Faith that is going to be trusted is going to be tested. And you have to understand that God is all in on you. And could it be that the reason why we go through what we go through is just opportunities for God to show us that I'm worth the wait. I'm worth to be tested. You can trust me because from the very beginning, I already saw where you were going to be and what you were going to go through. And I still said, he's my friend. So the first lesson was that we believe a story before we tell a story. The second lesson that I learned through the story of Job was this, is that waiting while the story is being written strengthens our faith. Waiting. Go with me to Job 32, verses 1 through 2. It says this. It says, so these three men stopped answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. But Elihu, I believe that's his name, or Hootie Who, one of those. And he said, son of Barakel, the Buzite of the family of Ram, became very angry with Job for justifying himself rather than God. Justifying himself rather than God. And so Job was right because for the next 30 some chapters, there he was talking to three friends. They were like Eliphaz, Beladad, or Zophar, something like that. I called them Ignacio, Bethel, and Zoe. Okay, they just, they just came real easy to me. But they really weren't friends. You don't want friends like the Job had. Who were just totally telling them, Job, there's something you did wrong, bro. You, there's something you did wrong because you know what? Only bad things happen when you do things wrong. Bad things only happen when you're sinning. Bad things only happen when God's mad at you. How many of us have lived our lives that way? But waiting while the story is being written will strengthen our faith. Our faith, not our face, because me and our face will still stay the same sometimes. <laughs> and so in this, in this passage, you can see that Job had some pride that he was dealing with. Sometimes we don't realize it, but it creeps up so fast that we begin to believe that the reason why we've been doing good all along has been because of us. Pastor Robert Morris says this. It says, pride is defined as anything we do on our own strength. And sometimes during the waiting, God is reminding us that there are possibly things that we need to work on. And so like I was telling you, then this season, I've been learning through my children a lot. And so one day we were at home, and I had just gone off of work. And you know, it's stressful at work. Anybody with me? Amen? You know, we love coming home because it's peaceful. It's peaceful. Our marriages are perfect. Our children are perfect. But it's just work. You know what I mean? God, help me at work because then, you know what? Life would be perfect. And so <laughs> you caught the sarcasm. Good. And so I get there. And my kids are just running amok. And my wife is yelling at them and telling them to do this. And there they are on the sofa, not a care in the world. Lucas and Sophia are wrestling on the carpet. I don't know what Melly's doing. She has earplugs in her ears. God only knows what she's watching. Help me, Lord. You know what I mean? And there we are, just completely chaos. And all of a sudden, this guy right here who loves the Lord just snapped. And I said, that's it. Everyone get on the sofa. Just like that too, you know what I mean? But I'm a nice guy. And anyways, I told them, listen, you guys are just being so unappreciative, so ungrateful. We give you everything you want, and yet there you are just completely asking for more. 
paying no respect and no appreciation to the work your mom's doing. And I can hear them, but what about you, Dad? It's not about me right now. I'm talking about you. <laughs> and so what we did is we took away all of their technology for a whole week. <laughs> yes, thank you. Because it was hard because then I was thinking like, great, what am I going to do with them for a whole week? You know what I mean? Yeah, got you. I got you. And during that time, God spoke to me. Son, that's just like how you are too. When things are going good, you love me. When, only when you need something do you come after me. But I've been so faithful throughout the years that you have lost sight that it's because of me that you have everything. Pastor Dave Patterson says this. He says, the joy in your life is not the fruit of your circumstances, but it's a relationship with Jesus. And could it very well be that when we are going through adversity, when we are suffering, and we are going through difficulty, that God has created opportunities to show us that it's not about what we have, but in the relationship in who we have it with that makes everything all right. During this time, you may be going through hard times, but could it be that God is trying to create these opportunities because there are areas in our life where we need to grow? There are areas in our life that need to be corrected. There are areas in our life that God is trying to teach us and that there is very possibly that God is creating this time of difficulty and hardship to allow our roots of faith to go a lot deeper in him. But we don't see it. And Job did not see it either because he began to believe that, you know what, look at what I did. He's telling his friends, he's telling God, but I did this, I did that, I did this. Why am I enduring all of this pain? And isn't it just like us at times that we respond the same way? But, ooh, does God come in and tell Job some things? <laughs> yeah, Job 40. It says this in the New Living Translation. It says, this is God saying, will you discredit my justice and condemn me just to prove you are right? I know. It's like, I'm sorry, God. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the message says it. It says it like this in the message, Job, Job 40, verse 8. It says, do you presume to tell me what I'm doing wrong? Are you calling me a sinner so that you can be a saint? <laughs> yeah. And here I was standing over my children, telling them, look at what we've done. Your mom and dad have worked hard. Your mom and dad go to work every day so that you can have everything that you have. And you guys are just totally breaking in and asking on, give me something else. And God is saying, nah, bruh, that's you. <laughs> when you finally get humbled, it does something to you because it reminds us that we must learn to trust God who is good and not in the goodness of life. It's, it could be said this way. May we see God for who he is and not just for what he does. And in the waiting that's exactly what God is possibly trying to teach us. I know he was teaching me because all I wanted to know was why, God? Why is it that they're getting the blessing and I'm still hurting? Why, God? Why is it that they get their breakthrough in their finances, but it's not happening for me? Why, God? Why is it that they can stay at church, but I have to go and work a full-time job? Why, God? Why is it that they get called to go and speak, but not me, God? And everything. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. You guys are all saying it's the 11 o'clock service that, you know, they deal with this. And it goes on and on, and the list goes on. And God is saying, no. You're, you're, the problem is, is that the reason why it hasn't come to your hands is because that's all you've been focused on is what's in your hands. 
when your focus and your attention should be on God alone. May we serve God. May we follow God for who he is and not just for what he does. The third le personal lesson that I learned, I'm going to ask the worship team if they would to get ready to come, is that tell the truth of the story. When we tell the truth of the story, it reminds us that our faith is to be shared. Our faith is to be shared. Go with me to Job 42, 1 through 6. It says this. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. I think that's a song. Can't stop God. You asked, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take everything I said, and I sit in the dust and ashes to show my repentance. It took Job 30-some chapters to finally get to a breaking point where he began to tell the truth of the story. And what the truth was is that, God, I'm nothing without you. Everything I have is because of you. How foolish of me to be mad at you when you're the one who controls everything. Father, forgive me for thinking that it was about me when I should be making it all about you. When we choose to tell the truth of the story, we show a repentant heart. When we choose to tell the truth of the story, we are able to bring freedom to others and forgive others. When we choose to tell the truth of the story, our eyes are open to see the goodness and faithfulness of God. So you're asking this morning, John, what's the story? I'm glad you asked. Because I was wondering the same thing. And then God showed me this. We always read, I always read in the book of Job that there was three friends, but I didn't know there was a fourth one. And it was a young kid who was just so happens to be in proximity of the conversation that's going on with Job and his three friends. And his name is Elihu. Elihu means my God is he. And it would just dawned on me, God spoke to me. If there's a story we should be telling, is that my God is he. That I, in the good times, can still say, my God is he. As I say in the bad times, my God is he. When I have, my God is he. And when I lack, my God is he. When I'm sick, my God is he. When I'm healthy, my God is he. When they let me off my job, my God is he. When I don't know where the money's going to come from, my God is he. I'm telling you, there is power when we tell the truth of the story. So as they say, let me land the plane, you know, watch out. So these last three months have just been absolutely mind-blowing to the point where my mouth has just dropped and I'm just in awe of the goodness of God. I, I don't have time because, you know, they tell me right here, I'm almost done. But for the last three months, God has just been so supernatural good. And I just felt like the Lord was saying, John, you need to be generous. Believe me, when God is blessing you financially, that's the last thing we're thinking about is being generous, unless it includes me, right? Be generous to me, God, right? Keep it coming. And so Pastor was saying, hey, youth camp is about to happen. Guys, pray. See where the Lord leads. And it was instantly, God gave me a number, 
and I told my wife, this is what we're going to do. You know, watch, I put my foot down like Pastor taught me. That's what we're going to do, mujer. <laughs> it didn't happen like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been wanting to tell the kids the story. Because what they didn't know and what God reminded me is the money we gave, the number, was exactly almost to the dollar what we were receiving every month when God was getting us out of debt. Wow. <laughs> and God says this, what was a blessing to you will be a blessing to others. What freed you <laughs> will free others if you would just tell the story. And so I'm getting all goosed up, and I'm like, yes, God, I'm going to tell my kids. And for two weeks, I did not tell my kids. <laughs> Finally, we're going to Magic Mountain for Lucas's birthday. And guess, what did they ask for? Dad, can I have Starbucks? See, mijo, it's your birthday. Even though we get it every weekend, you know what I mean? <laughs> and we're driving, and I tell my wife, as she's in the passenger seat, hey, can I tell them story? And she's like, yeah. So I tell them. I go, the reason why you have Starbucks and the reason why we're going to Magic Mountain isn't because of your mom and dad, but it's because of God. Because God has been so good. And I just tell them the same story I'm telling you. And I was like, so if you see your dad over there in the corner by the roller coaster crying in the corner, just leave him alone. You know what I mean? Because I didn't think this was possible. And then my wife looks at me and she goes, you don't know. I was like, what do you mean you don't know? You don't know the story. I'm like, I just told them the story. She goes, well, that's just part of the story. She goes, Melody, our oldest, woke up and had a dream. And she said, Mom, I had this dream that there were these four angels. And that they were run, they were young angels. They were running back and forth from tower to palm, palm to tower. And we were, they were helping moving things and doing stuff. And my wife instantly felt the conviction of God upon her and say you've been dragging your feet you need to give the money she gives the money only to find out that the, 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 the youth that we help were two boys and two girls the same vision that my daughter had and God is telling me if I had not told the story my daughter would have been left interpreting her story as that it was not from God and we here we are holding on to gains when God is calling us as he's telling Job tell the story Job tell me when it hurts tell me when it's good tell me when it's bad tell me when you're frustrated tell me when you're agonizing tell me the story church we will not be silent anymore we as adventure church will from this moment on and always tell the story that my God he is let me pray for you father we come before you God and we thank you because it is because of you that every good thing we have comes from you in Jesus name we pray amen